Juanita Ag, the better half, as some might say, of the, our our friend, the late Ray Ag. Uh, that I remember Ray and talked to Juanita about Ray and and all the things that uh, he loved about racing and life in general. Uh, welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, you know, legend. I'm trying. You know, people ask me what what defines a legend, and uh, I think it's different for a lot of people, but. I think a legend is somebody who takes a, a place in your heart and your in your mind as good memories. Yes. And uh, Ray was definitely that. He was a, he he loved what he did. He was uh, everything drag racing, but he did a lot more than just drag racing. But but what an awesome man! So we're glad to have you here today. Thank you for inviting me. So wh when did you first where did you first meet Ray? When, where where when and where? <laughs> I worked for the phone company, and Ray had just been moved to Williams Air Force Base. And I was single at the time, and I invited, asked one of my friends who worked as an installer out at the Williams Air Force Base if he could find me a rich, single officer. <laughs> well, his name was Paul Clough. He was also a racer years and years ago. And uh, so that's how he knew Ray, and he knew that Ray was out at Williams Air Force Base and that Ray was single at the time. And so was he an officer? No, he wasn't an officer, and he wasn't rich. No, he wasn't rich. But he was single. Hey. <laughs> he, he was single. That was the most that important, was the important part. part. Okay. Yeah. Yes, very much so. And so Paul told me a little bit about it, not a whole lot, and said that I could he give me my phone number. Paul transposes numbers from time to time. Okay. So he gave Ray the wrong phone number, and so finally he called me back. Paul did and said, "Did you give me the right number?" I said yes. So he gave Ray my correct number. Ray called me, came over to visit me on a Saturday morning, brought his son, Ray Jr., and uh, my daughter, Mary Ray. The four of us sat and talked for a little while. Then the kids went off and played. And from then on, it was just Ray and I. It just We just kind of hit it off. And five months later, we were married. <laughs> wow. Did you, did you, uh, sounds like you, you had an involvement or were around racers before? Oh, oh right? yeah. So oh, right. yes. how, when, when was your first? How did you get interested in racing? My first husband was a racer. Okay. Just a, he had a, a Camaro, a Camaro, and he would race it out beeline. And Ray and his first wife worked out there a little bit. But we both were very, very good friends with a racer named Joe Pierce. Right, yeah. And that, and that. So, Joe kind of kept in touch with all of us all the time, you know, he, you know how Joe, you knew Joe, I'm sure. Very social. Everyone did, yeah, yeah. and that. So uh, when Ray and I got together, we started going out every once in a while with Joe, or Ray would, and I would go sometimes if Jenny went, his wife. And uh, it just went from there. It just, Ray really liked racing. I mean, he didn't do a lot of his own racing, but he wrote a lot for Drag Race News, Drag News, and he would write uh, articles about what was going on at Beeline for them. Took a lot of pictures. Took a lot of pictures. Oh yes, a lot of pictures of everyone else but himself. <laughs> well, I mean, he knows what he looked like. He didn't need to need that. Right. Um, so, you you after five months you you married the guy. Yes. And didn't look back. No. The um, so in, in, during his time he was a, a photographer. Yes. He was a. a an author wrote articles for magazines and probably some newspaper stuff. Well, that was his job in the Air Force, right. was writing for the Air Force. He was a communications person, right? Person, Communication, right? yes. Right. So he, did, he, did, he knew how to do that. Yes. Uh, I think I remember that at one time he was even a teacher. He was a teacher, he got out of the service, got out of the service, and for one year he would not cut his hair. <laughs> and we have a picture of him, of, of his favorite person, which was Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> And he loved history. He would love writing anything he could find out about Beeline, about down in Tucson, a family history. He did a lot of family history. And uh, he just liked being around people that he enjoyed being with. Like I said, his best friends was like Jerry Hardick and Joe Pierce and Snidely and the Goosicks. He really liked them very well. I remember going out to their shop with him one time. We're going to a car shop. I thought it was a car shop. We were going to go see cars. 
No, it was the Gusick shop. It was a social visit. visit. Right. And that's where I met the Gusicks. Mm -hmm. I think that's where I first met him was when he was in the, in the Goosey Speed Shop at one time. It was, and he, he, he amazed me. I remember that, you know, hearing that he would, he'd been in the Air Force and he did all this really great stuff in the Air Force. And he dropped that talent to racing and did an awesome job with that. Um, you said he didn't have much involvement with cars, but he, was he involved with the car? Oh, he was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He was with Joe and, and uh, Snidely and there a lot that he would go out there and, you know, help them and do things. and. And that he liked, and he liked writing the stories about the different ones, about you know everyone that was raised, who won, who who was doing what, and he'd take pictures. Um, I had so many pictures of who I didn't know who anyone was or anything, so I gave them to Tommy Goosey. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was, that was, that was, no, that was yeah. very very nice thing to do. Because I didn't want to throw them away or anything like no. that, because they meant something to him, and um, so he he liked doing that. He, he also got the little kids, our boys, involved in boat racing, radio controlled boat racing, because they were too young to be working with cars and that at the time. So he got them into right doing boat racing, radio controlled boat racing. Had to race something, huh? Yep, that's right. <laughs> the, uh, he, uh, so he went, he went, he taught, he was a teacher? He was a teacher for, uh, what, almost 20 years. He taught uh, school history at uh, different high schools. Uh, it was at uh, North High, Camelback, and South Mountain. Wow. That was a, that's, a good, that's a good clip. Uh, he was there after I went to Camelback, of course, but you know, yeah. he was, uh, the Goosey family were there, all the way out there, but right. that was, uh, I knew that he had been there, and that was, I thought that was also kind of cool that he had a passion for, for racing. And so what the great thing was is that, you know, he was, he, he taught at the high school that I went to, oh. Camelback, and, even though I didn't have a chance, I, I, I it would listen to him tell stories about racing, and uh, and just he was a good storyteller. And I can only imagine how wonderful I loved the history, how much how great of a history teacher he he was. Because I'm sure he brought the detail and the obscure facts into the people. The, the, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. Right. And I'm sure people, you know, the students that this got a big bang out of him. Right. Yeah, somebody very proud of. Him. Oh, he, he, and he enjoyed the drag racing. He enjoyed meeting all the different drivers and uh, the young ones that were just starting off. He really liked working with them. I don't know how many of them showed up at our house after he bought his own dragster. He never raced except a couple of times, I think, at Beeline. Well, tell us about that car. <laughs> what do you remember about it? The kids sitting in it <laughs> 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 and having a couple of young boys tell me, oh yeah, I remember being at your house and sitting in your husband's a dragster. You were at my house and you sat in my husband's dragster? Oh yeah, he let us sit in it all the time. That, <laughs> that, that that's a big that's a big deal. I mean, uh, I remember being a young guy sitting in my first race car long before I even knew what drag races were. I mean, we had a neighbor that uh, that had a dragster and, uh, and it was, you know, I must have been first or second grade and uh, yeah. I got to go sit in it and I said, ah, I think that was my first real thinking that, that this is pretty cool. Oh, that's, and Gray really liked having a dragster sitting in our, our uh, driveway and everything. And the kids enjoyed coming and sitting in and he would explain what it was because, you know, a dragster does not look like a normal car on your, you know, you have. And the young kids, a lot of them don't know what a dragster is either. So he enjoyed educating the young kids that would come and uh, sit in the dragster and he'd tell about them. And a couple of them came back years later and told him, yeah, we bought a race car and we raced it out there at Beeline too. And Aww. so he always felt really, really happy that he was doing something to educate people that there are other things out there that you could do. Where, where, where was he, where was Ray from? Where did he grow up? He was born in Mesa, Arizona. So he's a, a local, wow. A local, yeah, yeah. Uh, the only time he was really away from, Cal it was here, he was served some time in California in Germany, and then of course he was in Vietnam. Well, we appreciate his service. Uh, you. Yeah, he, he, when he was called and he went, and and our country's better off for people like him. And oh, thank you. you know that's you know that's great. Uh, didn't I never? Everybody here, most everybody here is from somewhere else. Yeah. You know, uh, the uh, it's just, it's always great. I didn't realize that, that about Ray. Uh, so he he had a dragster. What was it? He, he, so he, did he race it a couple times, you said? Or? Yes, he did. 
and he always raced it when I wasn't out there with him. Was that by your choice or his choice? That was his choice because I would make, he said, I gave him anxiety because I'd ask him, why didn't you tell me you were going to race and I would be out there? He said, because you give me too much anxiety and I was afraid I was going to do something wrong. The smaller the audience, the better off he probably right. was, right? But he, he, he didn't do it a whole lot, but he, I'm sure he enjoyed it. Oh, he did. He enjoyed being out there, mixing with everyone, with the different drivers, and uh, taking pictures, and uh, just being there and doing things that he enjoyed, talking with the different drivers, the people, getting little stories about them, and uh, seeing how well they did and everything. So he, uh, he took a lot of, you know, Tucson Dragway, Beeline, a little bit in Firebird when it first started. Was he, did he ever get out that chance to go out there? I think he did a couple yeah. of times, yeah, yeah. I uh, think so. He uh, did, it, was there anywhere else he, he got to go that he enjoyed, like out of town? Or, or no, the only time he, we were, sometimes we went to California to Bakersfield, and uh, they had a little bit of a race area. Uh -huh. And if we were there when they had like, one, sometimes he would take the boys, our two sons, and go to visit for just a little while to give my grandparents a break from everyone. <laughs> R relief. Yes. That's that's awesome. If uh, if you were to say, say something uh, about Ray that people didn't know that would, that you knew, is there something that we, you knew? Our my wife knows more about me than anybody else. She tells me about things about me that. that couldn't possibly be true, but when I first think about it, she's pretty pretty serious about it. Right. What's like Ray to be remembered or known by? That he really enjoyed and loved the drag racing family, as he called it. The way that people always interacted, where so many people were so nice and talking and sharing stories and their families. And, you know, the Gooseeks, the uh, you know, or one of the biggest families that he was very fond of, and that. And um, there was other, the Pierce, Joe and Jenny Pierce, he enjoyed being around them, and Snidely and his family, and the Hardicks, I mean, we were, and Jerry and, and uh, Brenda, and uh, just everyone. He just enjoyed being around there when, uh, you know, Ron Fossil and all of those. Uh, he would like, you know, just be around them and listen to their stories and that, that they told. He, he did a good job of archiving as far as like getting information sheets on the different drivers and such and, and uh, Tom has actually brought some to us about you know when we talk about a certain racer and some of the stuff that, that you passed on to Tom. Uh, I would recommend that if you were a racer or had a family that was racing back in, in the era of, of Beeline mainly uh, and you are looking for an image of a, a, family, a family member's car or, or car you had uh, maybe uh, you know if you if you can nail it down to a era of, era of time, get hold of Tom Gusick at Desert Design Sportswear. Uh, I'm sure that uh, you know he'd love to re reunite people with their memories. Cause oh, he does. He def definitely, Tom's done a good, been a good gatekeeper of uh, Ray's work and something you know to be very proud of. Well, when I gave I gave Tom a lot of Ray's stuff and everything, then because I didn't know you know a lot of the people or anything, and then Tom gave me collage that he made up of Ray. He went through the pictures and found pictures of Ray with our grand, with our son and stuff, and then with the different stories he found. And they, he was made me this really nice collage that hangs in our hallway that tells all about what Grandpa did or what, you know, Great Grandpa, because he, he would have been a Great Grandpa now. And uh, so he did a really, Tom did a really good job of bringing all that to the knowledge of the kids. Well. I won't tell anybody that Tom did something nice. We don't want everybody to know. <laughs> now, Tom, Tom through his great, uh, his grace, we also fil film in his at Desert Design Sports right. Center in Mesa here. Uh, he's a big supporter of what we do, and uh, I'm glad that uh, he and you know he's able to carry Ray's memories on and and share them with other people because he he does do his very best to yes, to pass that on. Uh, Juanita, we we really appreciate having you here today. Thank you. For uh, Ray is definitely, you know, we did the, for the definition of a legend. You know, he had great memories in my mind, a lot of people's minds. He was a great person, a uh, great soul. Uh, he did, everything he did with racing was a passion. Nice. And uh, life doesn't get any better than that when you have a passion you love so much and you do so well in. 
and uh, Ray Agee is an Arizona drag racing legend. Thank, Thank you for you. being here today. Thank you.